everyone welcome back to another video remarkably i have bought like no new makeup really i've gotten like a few refills on things but i've not actually really gotten anything new for quite a few weeks now which is a super big accomplishment i'm very proud of myself but simultaneously it really made me realize just how much i was depending on new product i, I was using it as a crutch for my youtube channel that was how i made new content was whatever new stuff i had coming in that week and even if i i wasn't actually like you know i wasn't buying things frequently enough that i literally had stuff coming in every week but it was definitely you know pretty often and i've definitely chilled out significantly now a lot of things really are not catching my eye lately and I've really had to stay as on top of my budget as possible especially because I really want to get my I, I need to get LASIK done as soon as I can so uh and, and it made me realize I was really using new stuff and novelty I was heavily dependent on that to make new engaging content for my YouTube channel and I really don't want to have to depend on that to create content I want to be able to create content even if I could never buy a single new product ever again I would want to be able to still make refreshing original and fun makeup videos to the best of my ability so today I thought I would create an eyeshadow look and a, a whole makeup look without using eyeshadow palettes. I know, crazy. But I have definitely said before, I do have eyeshadow singles and I always am talking about how much I love singles this and singles that and yet I definitely don't use them as often as I use palettes. So I thought today that, and for several, as many videos as I can do, I want to go back and explore my singles collection and show it off more for the camera and so today I'm just going to be using singles to make an eyeshadow look. So to start off with, I'm going to use the Bite Beauty Hydrating Primer. I actually like this a lot more than I thought I would. I literally only bought it because I was not, it was $9 and I was like, meh, why not? But upon using it, it's actually really good. Um, it is a shame that their brand is gonna go away. I did not buy a backup of this. I already have a backup of my Dominique one. This one is a lot more creamy feeling and texture compared to that. It still has that watery kind of feel to it, but it's not, it doesn't turn to like liquid water like the Dominique one does. So it's a little bit more heavy duty. Honestly, I kind of wish I had discovered this sooner because if I had, I wouldn't have stressed so bad about my Dominique one because this is actually surprisingly good. Like, and I, I seriously considered getting a backup of it, especially if it's only $9, why not? But... I don't know, I'll, I'll have to think about it. I don't know how quickly I would finish it when I have backups of the other primer I like so much. But I will say, this is a surprisingly good primer. It's not as hydrating as the Dominique one, but I do really like it during the summer months. I have I can really appreciate this and it sucks that it's going away. And then before I forget, I'm gonna just put on a lip balm. The first thing that my hands reached for was the Bene Balm, so that's just what I put on. I don't think you can get Benabalm anymore though, I think they discontinued that, which, why would they do that? So good. I finally got my brand new Jaclyn under eye primer. This is a brand new bottle, or tube. Indeed, the texture is a lot different now. <laughs> That's what the new texture looks like, so I'll be interesting to see how long this one holds up for. And I definitely will be using this one a lot more often, so maybe I'll actually finish it. I got about 75% through my other tube before it really went too bad for me to use, so not bad, honestly, all things considered. It's just a shame that it seemed to go so bad so quickly. Hmm. I guess I shouldn't have expected anything less from her brand, right? But it's so good. <laughs> what can I say? It was half off on Morphe, so I didn't get it for like that much. All right, and then I'm going to go into the Tea Time Concealer Palette that was made by Pony and Fresh O2, and I'm gonna use the shade, and I'm gonna in her video, she used it on a finger, so I'm gonna try that where I use a finger. She used a finger to color correct, and then she used a brush to conceal. I'm gonna use my Estee Lauder Futurist Aqua Brilliance Foundation. I try to like kind of rotate through my foundations so that they all get equal amounts of love and appreciation. And it's, uh, it's late at night again so i don't need to wear a foundation that'll wear all day because it's the end of the day this foundation is not as glowy feeling as the Givenchy one so i feel like this is kind of the my preferred summer dewy foundation the Givenchy one i bought knowing that it's probably gonna be more of a winter pick for me i'm completely fine with that and then just a little bit on my forehead. My bangs are up in a curler today, but honestly, they're super oily, so I fully expect them to just look so greasy when I finally take my hair down. I forget during the summer how quickly my bangs can go oily, because in the winter, I'm so used to washing my hair 
like once a week. So I'll be sitting around and I'll be like, why is my hair so oily? It's only been three days. Well, it's summer, you idiot. Okay, well, if you hear any noises, the kittens are having a ball, so. Um, I just, I need to let them run and play. They've been up since like six, just to kind of let them eat and also so that my, I can feed my own cats. And then kind of closer to like, I usually remember around like eight to 8.30, I'll let them out and then I feed them before I go to bed. I'm gonna add some contour. And I haven't used this in a while because it got <laughs> taken over by Charlotte Tilbury, but I'm going to use Westman Atelier in Biscuit. I was watching Michelle Wong's video where she kind of just was like talking about all things Westman Atelier, which is very useful obviously for, you know, peasants like me who can't afford to just go out and buy everything that Westman Atelier has to offer. She definitely can sell anything to anyone it feels like sometimes because I now want that powder. <laughs> she definitely made it sound very nice. Because I was thinking about her video, I thought to myself that it's been a little while, a long while since I've used Biscuit on camera because I've just been using the contour wand repeatedly over and over again. So I will use Biscuit today because it's very nice. As you can see, it's a lot lighter in color than the contour wand. Blends out pretty much just as easily even though it's in a stick form. So it's also very difficult to overdo. It, I feel like the contour wand, you can definitely overdo it just because it is a liquid, it is dark. It blends out easily so it's very forgiving but at the same time there's definitely an overdue point whereas this particular shade Biscuit, it's lighter so it can only get so dark. And as you can see, by stippling it gently, I can blend it out really easily and it's not compromising like my foundation or anything. I just thought I would bring it out and use it again. It's, it's been a while. It's more, it feels more on the dry side like amber. So I feel like it's one of those shades where it's gonna like be years before it dries out. So it's, you know, it's, it's a hefty amount of product, but it is, it does last a while. I mean, I've had mine for over a year and now it still feels just as good as when I got it. But I just thought, <laughs> let's use something else for a change. All right, and then I'm going to use some loose powder just to set my under eyes. I don't know if I'm going to use a cream or powder or whatever blush yet, so I'm going to use some of the Jaclyn Under Eye Lilac Powder to set my under eyes really quickly. It is very brightening, so I do I do quite enjoy it. Just needs to be used kind of carefully. I don't really use this in the winter. I just realized I didn't put on any concealer. And I'm powdering, and I didn't put on concealer. Well, you know what? It's too late now. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have dark circles for this makeup look, you guys. So I'm going to take some powder foundation and attempt to cover what I can so that it doesn't look quite as dark. I am not thinking today. I don't think I'm thinking most days. All right, I covered these as best I could and we're just gonna have to move on with, with that. That was a mistake, but we're just gonna have to move on. At least I color corrected. So let me just get my nose really quick so that my nose is nice and matte because I don't want my forehead to be shiny at all. And then a little bit on my chin. And we'll pretend that I have covered under eyes. We'll just, we'll just pretend. Yeah, I do really like this powder. However, it can be mildly drying if used in excess, especially during the winter. So this is pretty much my summer powder. Okay, so off to a chaotic start, but we'll get there. So I'm going to do my eyebrows now using the NYX Micro Brow Pencil. I did in my, la in one of my recent videos talk about the Shiseido Brow Pencil and the only reason I'm not using that is because I'm just trying to finish this one up. I just have so much left and it makes me sad. <laughs> but my brows don't look awful today, so that's good. All right, and then I'm gonna use my brow blade. And my brow flicks did arrive in the mail yesterday. I just haven't had time to move them to my makeup desk yet, so I'm very excited to start using them. I think starting in the next video, you'll see me start to use that and I'll be using that for a very long time because I did buy two. Yeah, and this one is starting to go very brown, so it's definitely kind of on its way out. I'm probably gonna put it aside and just go ahead and throw it out and we'll call that done. So I didn't use eye primer because I'm going to be starting off with the Auric shade in Defiant. No, Disrupt. It's this red shade here. As you can tell, Mine has been not used yet. And the reason for that would be because I planned on using it and then I forgot to, nothing to it. <laughs> so this is going to be the base shade and then everything else is gonna go on top of this. So I'm going to just be using a Sigma brush. I do prefer to use synthetics on my cream shadows because I animal hair brushes are high maintenance. So I do tend to reserve those for powder if I can. Something like the Sonia G Lotus collection is definitely something I want to have, but no money yet. And this is going to be more or less the base shadow shade. I do really want her other duos. I just can't justify buying them. I couldn't justify buying them considering how infrequently I use my singles, but maybe someday when I, you know, have a better, I need, I, I would really love to be able to film more often so I can, you know, use my makeup more often, enjoy my makeup more often and rotate through the things I have. And then I can really justify buying more. 
I don't necessarily want to become a makeup reviewer. I feel like it's not really sustainable for me to do that. I would burn out and get sick and tired of reviewing new product eventually. I just get overwhelmed so easily. But I definitely want to be able to use what I have more often and enjoy the newness more often. But before I can do that, I really need to be honest with myself about the workload I can handle, about the content I can create. And I'm just gonna apply- I'm not using eyeshadow primer. I generally don't use primer if I'm laying down a cream shadow. Oh yeah, somebody definitely made a poop. I'm probably gonna get it up. I'm probably gonna go clean it up sometime midway through filming because I can smell it from here. This shade is- I'm not sh thinking I really like this shade as much as I like her other holiday shade, which I have used in a prior video. This feels to me like it has a very dark base and I can't really get the red to show through as well. It may be because the brush I'm using is a little bit on the fluffier side, but at the same time, I had had the impression that this shade is very, very, very like burgundy wine and it's coming off as very dark and blackened. I may just be- I may be the one who did not do my research. It's still very pretty, it's just not what I had had in mind. And I feel like this shade is a little bit patchy today. It could of course just be my eyelid, but this shade doesn't feel like it's laying on as evenly and as easily as the green one did. Yeah, I feel like it's not layering as elegantly. I mean, it's still obviously, it, it still works fine, it's still good. It's not performing to the same exceptional levels as the green one did. Which I know she said this was a very troublesome shade to make because it is, if I remember correctly, it's vegan and it's so not using Carmine kind of limits your options, but it's just kind of, it's not giving me the vibes, I guess, that I thought it was. I'm gonna switch to a denser, flatter brush and I'm gonna use it to see if I can pack on more pigment. Make it much dark, try and see if I can get that red to pull through a little bit more without obviously getting cakey because we don't want that. Okay, yeah, it's starting to show through a little bit more but this is definitely a lot darker than I anticipated it being and it's a lot more mute than I anticipated it being. And that could be, that probably is more on me just kind of misreading the marketing and just kind of having a different expectation from what the product actually promises. Okay, so a, a denser brush is definitely the way to go. All right, I'm gonna start working that onto the lower lash line. It is really pretty though. I mean, it is really pretty still. It's just not what I was expecting. It's a lot darker and more dark base than I was expecting, that's all. Okay, yeah, honestly, not bad at all. Uh, it got there eventually. I do feel like I had to work a little bit harder. It's a little bit on the patchy side, but you know, the first impression of how something performs is almost never indicative of how it actually performs. It could be that my eyelids are dry today. Maybe I needed to use a little bit more primer than I did. So I will not be placing any judgment or anything like that. That's silly. I'm just gonna make sure that these two eyes are symmetrical. Miso's pulling eyeshadow palettes out of my shelf. He's using his paw and he's he's pulling palettes out of my shelf. Is there something back there, dude? What did you find back there? I know me so. It's hard. Life is hard being a cat. It's been so hard. I did look up there to see if maybe there was a bug or if there was like, I don't know, cat poop back there or something. I did look. Cause sometimes when he does that, it's because he sees something. I didn't see or smell anything. So I think he's just making mischief because he can. So I'm going to go into, I'm gonna go into Wedge. It's kind of my de facto blended out shade I use for a lot of just randomness. So I'm just gonna use Wedge to softly smoke things out and make sure everything is blended. It is definitely kind of one of my favorite matte singles. It just works really well. <laughs> and I have enjoyed recently pulling my lower lash eyeshadow out further by smoking it out further as it goes back. I have enjoyed how that makes my eyes look, so I'm using Wedge to do that today. I don't know, it just kind of makes my eyes look deeper somehow. I feel like trying to add length on my upper lash line only goes so far. Past a certain point, it just kind of starts to look weird because my head is very narrow and I don't really have much like space here before it just curves back because my face is long but narrow. So I find that kind of messing around with my lower lash line gives me a little bit more room to play. All right, so I'll call that good. And I'm going to move on to using the metallic now as the point color. So this is so quiche from ColourPop. I bought it because of the swatch from Temptalia. It looked so unique. I have swatched it myself, but I've not actually used it on my eyes yet. It has such an interesting shift to it. it. It looks really interesting. I think So Quiche really is definitely one of the unique ones. Like if you just wanted one Super Shock to get the experience, 
So quiche is one of those, I would personally say. And this is gonna go on the center instead of the shiny shade in this duo. Yeah, it's just, it's really interesting looking, I guess. Like there's not really a good way for me to describe it other than, oh, it's interesting. I do personally find that the super shocks tend to stick more to my finger than to my eyelid unless I put were to make my eyelid sticky beforehand. It's a similar thing that the Jaclyn singles do where it comes off on my finger onto my finger really well, but then it kind of just stays on my finger and doesn't transfer to my eyelid. I find that to be a really common problem with singles when I use my finger. I think Jaclyn does it the worst, which is not surprising, but ColourPop does do it to some extent. It's just more forgivable considering that they're not that expensive. Now, I'm sure if I had used a glitter glue of some kind, it would look better, but the whole point of Super Shock is that they're supposed to be like easy, so. All right, and now I'm gonna use a brush to see if I can get a little bit more kind of pigment out of that. I'm gonna use a firm brush so that I can really pick it up. Good grief, it stinks. <laughs> I'll go nose blind to it eventually. It's not uncommon for foster kittens when rescued from the outdoors to come with questionable stomach health, <laughs> and it can take a while to get things clear out you know you got to deworm them if they have anti if they need antibiotics the antibiotics can give them diarrhea because now you need to give them probiotics so it can take a little while to get them all straightened out and in the meantime you get to deal with stinky doo-doo yay so yeah there's some cats where it, it's fragrant i mean it could it could peel the paint off the walls is what my superior likes to tell me but you deal with it i mean it's not really you get used to it these are what the, I'm trying to come up with a good word. These are expensive enough to make your brain melt a little bit for what they are. The price will make you just, it, it'll give you a minor artery block buying it. Um, I got it during the 30% off sale, which is pretty much the only instance I'd recommend you ever buy something like this. And I do wish I could buy more, but again, I was like, I cannot buy more if I'm not gonna be using them. So this is the cheetah one. Honestly, they are really pretty. I do find them to be very elegant, but are they worth the amount of money that they're charged? Like if if somebody was telling me, oh, this is $32, I would say, oh, that's expensive for a single. But the finish is, you know, the finish does feel like it, a 32 single. It has a particular amount of sparkle to it that feels very, you know, it definitely feels like it's coming out of off a luxury product. But I think these are over $50, which is like, Okay, that's a little bit excessive, which is why, again, the best time to get them is during the, the very rare, I think it's only once a year that they do the birthday sale. That's the best time to get things, but you do need to kind of get on it quick because stuff does, stuff does sell out pretty fast. Like I really wanted the giraffe collection, but I think in the end it ultimately sold out. I just never, I, I just, that and Metal Lust were the two that I really wish I could have gotten, but I just didn't have the money. So pretty. I love how this looks on under my eyes, so I need to remember to use this more often. It is a really good inner corner highlighter. And do you see how pretty that looks? I honestly could also use this as a face highlighter if I wanted to, I'm sure. It kind of reminds me of, remember how if any of you watch Pony, you'll know that for several years she used lace shirring from Misha to do her inner corners and her face highlight for a really long time. It was what, like two years she used lace shirring for consistently? She uses all kinds of stuff nowadays. But yeah, just, it is just something about this shade definitely feels really luxurious so i'm glad i have it i don't necessarily think it's worth it at full price but for sale price i honestly am really happy that i have it so if any of you guys are into like korean makeup where it's like inner corner ayo cell kind of thing then this is definitely like the shade for that it's just it's a very precise champagne it's a very precise sort of champagne that i like all right so that's more or less the eye look, nothing groundbreaking here. I wanted to do something super simple this time, just using those three singles plus wedge, I guess. But for that, you could have even blended it out with like a bronzer or something. So three shades, maybe four if you want to count wedge. That's it. So simple and so easy, so pretty. And then I'm going to curl my lashes and I'm going to use only mascara today. Now I've mentioned in my other videos, I got a lash lift and I don't like, I don't like it. Um, because the person didn't use conventional lash lift formula. They, she used more one that was more like all natural and vegan. It also, at the same time, because of that really cannot, it was no match for my super stubborn lashes. We both found out. So sadly it was a no-go for me, but I still do want to do a mascara only look today just because I'm 
I'm lazy. And it's nice for you guys to see my makeup looks with my natural lashes every now and again. I do have a waterproof mascara coming in. It's just that Yes Style can sometimes take a little while to ship it and it was one of those 21 day items. But in the meantime, we just have to make do with what we got, which is fine. And curl the bottom ones too. Never forget the bottoms. Which I learned how to do it just by watching Pony a bunch of times. Um, the way she does it is pretty much just how you do it. I'm going to be using a new mascara. I'm like, I'm not really into the Rare Beauty one. It looks good on my lower lashes, but it ended up just not looking great on my upper lashes. And I bought this at Sephora because it's on sale. It's the Bite Beauty Upswing Mascara. I've never used it before and because it was on sale, I've... And it seems like it's a cult classic mascara that a lot of people really like. So I thought, mm, why not? Let's give it a try. So I'm going to do my lower lashes first. That way I can let them dry while I do my upper lashes. Brand new spank and new mascaras. I, they you sometimes do need to let them age a little bit before they get really good. So no judgments. I'm just going to use it. It does have a very big fat wand. So <laughs> not necessarily the friendliest for my eye shape, which is, oh well. Okay, so and then I'm going to apply it to my upper lashes and we'll see what happens I don't really expect it to like hold my curl or anything like that because it's not waterproof. Whatever. We'll see what it does Okay, so that's one coat on so I'm going to go in with a second coat My only problem with mascaras is that they always pick up so much product and over time the neck of the bottle gets messy as you wipe off on it Wish we didn't have to do that all the time it's definitely very lengthening. If my lashes were more better lifted, I would have like crazy long lashes right now from this mascara. Super lengthening. The volume probably, I could see the volumizing coming with time as the formula dries up. But yeah, my lashes are already kind of starting to go so that's okay. So yeah, my lashes are not really anything particularly epic today, but the eyeshadow is super pretty and I'm gonna put on some eyeliner, so that'll more or less make my eyes look a lot better. But you can really see the power of just some simple, effective singles in elevating your eyes, even if you are, are like me and you don't really have lashes. So I'm going to use my brown liner. I do wish I had a brush liquid liner that was brown but darker brown. I know they exist, I just haven't found one yet. I'm not doing super dramatic, it's just a little extra to add some length to my eyes. And again, they always end up at different angles, but that's the fun part of makeup, right? This makes my lower lashes look a little bit more full. It was a little dark today because the ink was coming out a little aggressive today, which happens sometimes. I prefer to use the Benefit liner for this actually because the Benefit one is even lighter. That one is like such a nice light shade of brown. But I'm lazy today, so we're just gonna use the same liner. We could use a little bit of extra darkness in the outer corner. So I'm going to I'm going to go back into the disrupt shade and I'm just going to add kind of I'm using a tiny tiny brush. I just want to add some like kind of more obvious darkening, like a double wing. I'm definitely getting a lot of like inspiration from Douyin makeup looks of how they love to just play with their lower lash line way more than Western makeup. They really just take full advantage of their lower lash line in ways that I'd never really thought about. So I've been having a lot of fun experimenting with the potential. Honestly, I'm having a ton of fun with it. Yeah, so just, it's, it's subtle, but it just kind of adds a little bit of depth to the outer corners of my eyelid. Especially because, you know, my lashes are not able to really help with emphasizing the look at all. So I'm really having to rely almost entirely on the eyeshadow and the eyeliner to kind of open my eyes and make my eyes look elongated and extended. I don't have lashes that can do that for me. So I did end up selling my M Cosmetics Lychee blush stick. I just was not using and appreciating it enough to have it in my collection. I, I just wasn't. I really wanted somebody else to use it that would love it more than I did. So I don't have that anymore. I only have Terra. I still really like it and I would still definitely endorse it to anybody who wants it, but I just never ended up using it. So, but I am going to use a stick blush today because I have it, I might as well as use it. And I'm really trying to, you know, enjoy what I have and stick blushes can and do eventually go bad. So I'm going to be using the Jaclyn stick in Overruled. This is the only blush stick formula where I still retain the shades that I bought and I do actually have all four shades, but I figured that I would hold on to these just because I wanted to still have like one blush stick formula that I really like, Just, but I don't really buy any more of them. I've come to really personally like the liquid matte blushes. That's kind of what my current I'm currently favoring. So like the NYX soft matte one. 
and the 3CE one is what I like. But yeah, I just ultimately never ended up going for stick blushes. I really thought I would. Um, as it turns out, if the blush is not super vibrant, I'm not gonna like it because as you blend out a blush color, it becomes less vibrant and more and more sheared out. So I had bought all these neutral shades thinking that I would like them, but then when I used them, I never really could see any impact, so I just never ever used them, so I have since sold all of them. And now, if I do ever get a blush stick again, it's gonna be something like Mario's Raspberry, which I do actually want, but it's just been sold out for a while. You know, I'm really glad that I'm learning these things about myself. It really helps save me money. For a long time, I had to really grapple with accepting that because I almost felt like I wanted to be that girl who uses that blush. Finally, I have you have to eventually come to a point where you just have to acknowledge that what your fantasy self likes is just a fantasy and you need to just embrace what you personally would actually use in real life. I really struggled with accepting that my blush preferences were just not on trend, um, but you know what? Trends come and go. But yeah, this is a really pretty shade though. You can definitely see, very pretty. Now for highlighter, I want to go with something a little bit more kind of toned down, so I'm gonna go in with kind of a mix of these two shades from the Jaclyn Winter Sun Face Palette. Uh, I'm not trying to use Jaclyn's products on purpose, it just kind of ended up being that way. It is quite powdery, so calling it cream to powder is pretty much a lie. However, um, it's also a lot more toned down than I guess you would expect of her, but it's actually quite, quite refined, quite elegant, I would say. Very pretty. So I really like the highlighters in this. They're not as out there as her other ones are, and they actually are surprisingly good at hiding your skin texture, which is not something that can be said of some of her other highlighters, which are just so bright that I feel like they show everything. And then I'll take it on my finger or up under my brow arch. And I definitely am well aware that I sometimes get highlighter in my brow hairs, but I don't really care. And then I do put a little bit on my chin. Okay, so face is on, looking really good. Got to show off a lot of products I really like. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, I'm gonna take a setting powder and I'm going to set all of that down. So I'm using powder moves. I've been testing it out very intensely. That's why I'm using it so much. I haven't used setting powder yet, so this is going to be my setting powder. And this one does have a mild amount of glow to it, so kind of liven up my face. So far, I really like it. So now that's all that's left is the lips. Now, my Benetint does darken my lips considerably, and it is actually really pretty, and I do like how it looks, so I don't really think I need to go too ham with the lip product today, so I'm just gonna line my lips with the Incognito shade, which I need to sharpen. I'll sharpen it when I wash my brushes. tried not to go overboard with the overlining today because the rest of my makeup is comparatively not super wild and crazy and out there. And then I'm going to finish off with looking for something a little bit more kind of muted. I'm going to go with, I think Cherry Bomb will be a really fun shade to use. And if I don't, and if it ends up being too dark, I'll use something else to lighten it up. Okay, so I'm just going to put that much on and I'll kind of blot it around my lips. My lips have been very flaky um, for the past like couple days, so nothing matte today because it would just emphasize everything. Really just kind of blotting that out. Trying not to go too overboard with the application, but I do want to make sure I get the corners of my lips or else my lips look really short. And then I'm going to go in with my Dior Lip Glow Oil in Cherry, which are these re-released? Did they come back in stock or did they get like renewed? I'm so confused. I don't know what the status on these is. All I know is that I'm glad I got what I got. <laughs> they sold out quickly. I guess they went viral or something. And then I guess I saw them on the Dior website a couple weeks ago under like a different name. I don't know what happened to them. But I'm gonna use this just to kind of blend out the top and add some shine. Okay, yep, my bangs are definitely in Greasyville and I need to wash them. Oh my gosh, they are so gross. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this very simple little tutorial slash I use things and put them on my face. Yeah, I like, honestly, I really like how it turned out. It is very simple, but actually quite effective. And even without the lashes, you can see the eye makeup still does a lot to transform how my face looks and how my eyes look, which goes to show how great the eyeshadows are. Hopefully I can get my act together and be a little bit more on top of things and have better videos, a little bit more planning. I'm really working on it, but in the meantime, please, as always, leave any requests in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys found this look to be a lot of fun, maybe a little bit inspiring. Use what you have to try and create something similar. And other than that, I'm gonna sign off and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.